seven, six, five, three, two, one, zero. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Free Thought in Florida. Free Thought in Florida is a production of the Atheist Community of Polk County. I am Sarah Ray, your host. With me tonight, Allie Ashmead. Allie, how are you? I'm good. I'm doing really good. <laughs> oh, so, apologies for the late start tonight. Uh, I lost track of time. And <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and then Becca you know. was on the way back with Taco Bell and, you know, priorities. Yeah. You're you're allowed, right? Mm-hmm. You to have a life? Sure. <laughs> What are you going to do? Quit the show? Stay tuned for a special announcement <laughs> later in the night. What um, <laughs> up, bumps? Anyway, uh, this is Friday, the 24th of September, 2021. Um, and we want to thank our patrons, the people who make the show happen at patreon.com slash polkatheists. All of you who have supported us along the way, you're absolutely wonderful, and we love you so much. Um the 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 money that we've earned through our Patreon has supported not only the show but also the food security programs that the Atheist Community of Polk County does on a regular basis. So thank you for all of that. Um, I want to talk about some stuff tonight. Uh, Devin should be joining us in a, a wee bit, and Devin is excited to talk about the start of the legislative session here in Florida and uh, the garbage that they're already trying to push through, including a Texas-style anti-abortion bill. So you have that to look forward to. I'm going to read a letter from Andrew Seidel, who's uh, who's cool. amazing and mentioned and mentioned us. Uh, Aww. Awesome. Um, oh, hey, here's another thing that happened. Well, I was going to show you. So we canceled we've been canceling shows left and right like there's been a lot going on y'all um, yeah a lot so i was going to show you our wonder, our wonderful award that we received uh the atheist community of Polk county from uh, american atheist for being the the american atheist uh affiliate of the year um but i packed it up and sent it off to to live with all of the other acpc awards and things so i don't have it here to show you but what i do have to show you I'm going to switch us over here, is the latest edition of the uh, American Atheist magazine. And that's us! Yay, that's us! So that was really cool. Living Our Values, the Atheist Community of Polk County, and other American Atheist affiliates take secular action. So that was a really nice thing. Nice! Yeah. We don't do it for the recognition, but it does feel good to get recognized. So Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Where do we want to start? <clears throat> mm. Let's start with. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, get ready, y'all. Uh, okay. What's, what is it? What's. <laughs> I, no, I want to save that. I okay. want to save that for just a little bit until, until Devin gets here. Um, <laughs> let's talk about uh, United Airlines. Have you seen. United Airlines, uh, a policy around uh, vaccines and vaccine exemptions? No, I haven't. I just, I know that some airlines are like requiring vaccine. And if not, then they charge like a, they charge the employee like a certain amount of money. I don't know if that's what United Airlines is doing. United, um, I pulled this story on the 8th. And um, as you can tell, we didn't get to it. Because <laughs> we haven't really been doing the show uh, very consistently. So I had pulled the story to talk about on the 8th where American Airlines was refusing employees to use a, a religious exemption from getting the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Now there's an update to that story already. This is from Reuters. Uh, United Airlines passenger jet. Uh, let's see. No, that's that's the photo caption. United Airlines uh, is facing claims that it unlawfully denied religious and medical exemptions from a requirement that employees receive COVID-19 vaccines after allegedly making it difficult for workers to apply for them. Six United employees filed a class action in Texas federal court on Tuesday, claiming that workers who sought exemptions from the vaccine mandate were subjected to intrusive inquiries about their medical condition 
or religious beliefs, including a requirement that they obtain letters from pastors. Mm. Uh, Chicago-based United in a statement said the lawsuit was without merit and that it has seen an overwhelmingly positive response from employees since announcing its vaccine requirement last month. More than 97% of United's U.S.-based employees are vaccinated, the airline said. 97% is a great fucking That's, number. Yeah. Well done. Oh, I wish we could get that, like, in a county. <laughs> in right? Yeah. One county in Florida would be great. We could 97%. The lawsuit highlights the thorny legal issues faced by employers in mandating vaccines and comes as Joe Biden is seeking to require companies with 100 or more employees. We talked about that last time to mm -hmm. ensure their workforces are fully vaccinated or tested for COVID-19 weekly. The plaintiffs on Wednesday asked the court to temporarily bar enforcement of United's mandate for employees who request exemptions. United has required workers to receive at least the first dose by September 27th or face termination, according to the lawsuit. The airline mm -hmm. has already faced a separate legal challenge to its vaccine mandate, which was dismissed by a U.S. judge in Florida last week. That's shocking. The judge said the lawsuit was not filed properly. The plaintiffs in Tuesday's lawsuit say United gave employees only until August 31st to request religious or medical exemptions from the vaccine requirement and that it has automatically denied requests filed after that deadline. So the initial story that I saw mm -hmm. was, like, if, if you have a medical, a legitimate medical reason for not getting the vaccine, that is a mm -hmm. valid excuse to not get a vaccine. Right. But because I love Jesus, I'm not getting vaccines, which, by the way, <laughs> is not doctrine. <laughs> like, Right. It has nothing to do with it. This. That's how, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, sure. Then they implement a test. For you to show that not getting vaccinated is somehow part of your religious belief. I think that's fair. Yeah. If, if you're going to claim religious exemption for a thing, you should have to demonstrate that it's actually part of your religion. I agree. Well, they, they don't have anything else to stand on as far as the fact that that they just don't want to get vaccinated. So they've got to use the church. Right. Uh, they accused United of violating federal laws prohibiting discrimination based on religion and disability. Workers are seeking to represent a nationwide class that they said would likely include more than 2,000 United employees. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, just... Just get the vaccine. Just get the vaccine. How hard is... I mean, come on, people. If you, Yeah, like you said, if you can't do it because of a medical reason, fine. I get that. Right. Come on, people. Right. And and maybe I will detour down into this story now that we're, I mean, before, while we're still on COVID talk. Um, my mother has been in the ICU in a random, strange hospital in Arkansas. Um, the story goes, and I, the dates are all blurry because this is every, all the days are the same uh, mm -hmm. uh, recently. So they were at, they were in Texas visiting my sister. Um, they, uh, my dad got like overheated, was working, like helping my sister do some stuff that he shouldn't have been doing. And, you mm -hmm. know, he's stubborn and didn't stop when he needed to stop. And so he got overheated and dehydrated and he ended up in the, in the hospital getting an IV, uh, pumping him full of fluids. And then he was fine and they sent him on his way. And then like the very next day, uh, they called the ambulance to take my mom to, uh, the ER and she went in and they... Um, they gave her uh, some steroids and saw like some uh, pneumonia spots on her lungs, mm -hmm. gave her some steroids, cough it up. Hopefully you'll be fine. Uh, if it gets worse, come back. Right. Well, so they decided in their genius, we should just get in the camper now and head back home to Illinois from Texas. Mm -hmm. They got as far as Arkansas. Now, at this point, had she been diagnosed with COVID? She had not. Okay. Oh, so uh, wait, maybe maybe she did when she went into that first hospital. I think is when they when okay. they tested her so, positive. I believe. I don't know. And I then, don't know. It's and all then, run together in my brain. Okay. Just okay. Just curious. Yeah. Because they they knew she had pneumonia, and so they let her go. Ugh, yeah. yeah. So then anyway, they end up in Arkansas and back to the ER, and then they put her in a ICU for a while. She's better now. The good news is, like, she's there. She's on the mend. She's out of ICU now. 
they're talking about releasing her. Um, so like mm -hmm. uh, she may have to have oxygen uh, with her and we don't know for how long. Yeah. Um, but there was a moment there where I had to face that which we have been talking about uh, on this show and in our private conversations for over so long now. And over and over and we've been saying the same things and I know it's so repetitive, but yeah. Yeah. There was a moment that I thought my mother is going to die in this strange hospital, nowhere near yeah. home. Like that it, it's going to get, it's going to get worse and she's going to end up on a vent and that's going to be that. I, I had to prepare myself for that because yeah. that was a very real outcome. She's not vaccinated. Now my father I've learned is, yeah. um, so good and they won't let her because she's you know she can't get it now um, right but um like i don't know what it takes for people to wake up and get it but like if you can't close your eyes and imagine your mom in uh, states away from home in a strange hospital uh with and you, nobody can come visit her Right. Um, just if you can't picture your your parent or someone you love in that position, and that's not enough to get. I don't. I don't know what is. I don't know what is enough. Yeah. I mean, I imagine that was also terrifying for her mm -hmm. as well. So. Yeah, they would let my dad come up to the door. Mm -hmm. He would be able to, like, for fifteen minutes, he could stand in, at the outside the door and talk to her into the room. <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. Get your vaccines, damn it. There's Please. no excuse now. There's no excuse. Yeah. There's no excuse. Get the stupid vaccine. Um, and get the booster when it's available to you, too. Like, come on. Be smart about this. This could I've have been, all been prevented. I know. I'm, I've been hearing, like, conflicting things about the booster. Like, some are saying um, only... Uh, people who are immunocompromised and over 65 should be getting a booster. Um, so I haven't heard anything definite yet to say everyone else should just go ahead and get right. it. Yeah. You, yeah. If you're not, I want to say it's eight months from, from the first, uh, from the completion mm -hmm. uh, of the first, from the set. second, like oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. second yeah. shot or right. whatever shot, shot you got. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I want to say it was eight months. Um, and, and on that timeline, it would only apply to the high risk mm -hmm. elderly people with pre-existing conditions and that stuff, just based on right. the timeline. So yeah. yeah, when it is available to you, go get it. Yeah, go get it. I'll, I'll definitely get it. Scared and the I, fuck out of me this week. I with bet. With all the other things that we had going on. I like, bet. To, to have to carry that around on the back of my mind too. Jesus Christ. Um... <clears throat> Devin will be here very soon. She said she's almost here. Um, let me talk about um, Clearwater. How how much do you know about Clearwater? Clearwater is just a it's, it's in Florida down, down the way here. It's in Florida. It's near uh, Tampa. It's mm -hmm. on the West Coast. That's about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's all I know. Clearwater also happens to be like the mecca of Scientology. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That they have that big they own church like, slash institution there. and Yeah, they're like the largest landowner in Florida or some crazy shit. Really? I don't hmm. know. There's, there's something to that. Chalk uh, it up to uh, just the craziness in Florida. <laughs> why should I not? Why should I be surprised? Right. Why, yeah. are, why are we surprised at all? <laughs> um, Bro. <laughs> there's children here. Um, okay, so this comes to us from uh, TampaBay.com. Aaron Smith Levin, a familiar figure in the world of Church of Scientology defectors, announced Tuesday he will run for city council as someone who understands the church's impact on Clearwater and the work to ad and will work to address it. So he's a defector from the church. Nice. He said he will campaign for the city to push the IRS to review and revoke the church's tax exemption. Ooh, 
Oh, oh here we go. Out there doing the Lord's work. He <laughs> <laughs> his announcement follows the election last year of council member Mark Bunker, the first Clearwater candidate in recent history to advocate against allegations of abuse and fraud that have followed Scientology for decades. In one of his first actions in office, Bunker, in May 2020, proposed the city should request the FBI investigate Scientology for racketeering related to recent downtown property purchases made with $99 million in cash. Fuck. Fuck. Hey, All that money. I'm selling my house. You Scientology, you want to buy my house? I'll sell it to you. Right? Uh, you coming in with cash? You bet. Mm -hmm. But none of Bunker's four colleagues on the day has supported this idea. Smith Levin said he doesn't expect his election alone would provoke the IRS to act, but he said he would help break a pattern among local politicians who have for decades been reluctant to call for federal intervention in downtown Clearwater, Scientology's international spiritual headquarters. Real words written on the page. If Clearwater's, uh, quote, if Clearwater's own leadership isn't loudly demanding that something be done, why would anyone higher up the food chain do anything about it? Smith Levin said uh, in a video on his YouTube channel. The change in attitude has to start locally. Only then is there any chance of it working its way up to the county level, the state level, the federal level. Candidates for the March 15th election can formally file paperwork to raise money for their campaigns on Thursday, the official start of the campaign. This was about a week ago. Uh, other candidates have discussed intentions to run for the two seats up for grabs, but Smith Levin appears to be the first to make a formal announcement with his news release on Tuesday. That's interesting. Going after the uh, Church of Scientology. Smith, here's the background. Smith Levin was raised in a Scientology family and at age 12 began working on the church's public staff. At age 22, he joined the Sea Org, the church's military style workforce, which requires members to sign billion-year contracts and mm -hmm. pays less than $50 a week. Yep. He oversaw courses and counseling for parishioners before leaving in 2013. And don't think counseling is like actual, real, le legitimate counseling. Mm -mm, uh, it's not. It's that e-meter shit. Um, yes. <laughs> Smith Levin was story was featured on the first season of the Emmy Award-winning A&E series, Leah Remini, Scientology yes. in the Aftermath. Um, that was so good. Yeah. And this is why, this is how I learned about uh, Scientology, you know, like the details, like that Sea Org and that mm -hmm. hierarchy and crazy. the crazy shit that they were doing with the following you and like following her and things like that. Wow. Yeah. No, thank you. Um... Scientology, quote, Scientology is a criminal organization masquerading as a religion, Smith Le Eleven said in his Monday video. Scientology spokesman Ben Shaw did not immediately respond to a phone message or email for comment, but the church hosts a website that is critical of Smith Levin, alleging he was kicked out of Scientology and calling him a bitter, vindictive, and at times violent man. Since leaving Scientology, Smith Levin founded OTG Research Group, which conducts investment research for hedge funds. Uh, he also serves as the vice president of the Aftermath Foundation, which connects former Sea Org members with housing, work, and other support upon leaving the church. Ooh, that's great. I need to interview these people. Um. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so interesting wow right he said he's not a single issue candidate and he also wants to prioritize communication between neighborhood associations and the city council making permitting mm -hmm. and business easier and supporting the police and fire departments uh nearly all of the 13 candidates who ran for the three seats in march 2020 confirmed the top issue that citizens asked them about was what they were going to do about Scientology in the city? That's the number one question asked to candidates. Wow. Wow. Clearwater, you got some shit. Oh, man. This is, yeah. This is going to be interesting. All right. Devin! I'm going to add Devin on. 
Let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. We can hear you, Devin. You can start talking now. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> God, you're so loud. You're fine. You do, though. You Like, you have that microphone shoved way down your throat. <laughs> What? Not even that close. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> hey, God, why am I so big? My face is always so big. I don't know there. why. I try. My head's not that big. <laughs> um, here, let me. Hi, everyone. Oh shit. Welcome. Um, I'm here. <laughs> you made it. Yay. I made it. Yay. Wow. <clears throat> Did I miss a big announcement or something? No, no announcements no. yet. Nope. Okay, I was just checking. <laughs> no announcements just, yet. Just, uh, we were okay. talking. We were talking about Scientology. I love it. And uh, the uh, the number one question in 2020 of city council candidates in Clearwater was, "What the hell are you going to do about this search of Scientology?" Oh, because they kind of own that town. They sure do. They kind of own that town. That's going to be it's, fun. It's so weird because it's it's like it's a fairly major city in Florida. Kind yes. of. I mean, it's Tampa. Yeah, yeah right. Tampa. Right. So, you, I wouldn't know it was Scientology unless I had, I actually like had looked into it. I suppose. I don't think most people do know that it's the Scientology town. Right. Do they? I don't know. Outside of Florida, I don't think they do. No, I don't know. Outside of Florida, probably not. It's not well, mm. Scientologists know, but I, I mean, that. Tom Cruise is in on it. <laughs> Like Tom. you, you, you know, like you associate Mormonism with Utah. Like that's mm -hmm. just always so it, absolutely it is, Mormonism is Utah. But I, do, you don't, I don't think people go Scientology, oh, Florida, oh, right, Clear Florida. Water. right? I would think California <laughs> for before anything because they do have yeah. like the celebrity center out there. Yeah, I, I am wearing a shirt. Just FYI, it's very low. I mean, cut. you don't have to. Okay, <laughs> okay, Devin. Everyone know We're that. not monetized, so we can't. Get <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Do it for free. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I want okay. I have one more article I want to read, and then we'll get into uh, Devin's uh, uh, tell us about the the start of the My Florida legislative session mm -hmm. and all of that. But I, I wanted to read this first. This was another um, wonderful shout out from our friend Andrew Seidel, who is the head legal guy at the Freedom from Religion something. Foundation. Something I don't know what his title is, but he's uh, he's the Fafurf legal guru. Fafurf. And he wrote a love letter to ex evangelicals and those deconstructing their toxic faith that published in Religious Religion Dispatches on September twentieth. And uh, I'd like to just, I'd like to just read it here, because I think it's good. I'm astounded by people who have the intellectual honesty, courage, and fortitude to examine their most deeply held beliefs. Not just ex examine, but challenge and reject beliefs that shape how their entire world is constructed. Beliefs that they have been told were unequivocally true by their most trusted sources since they were little beliefs that have been deliberately and systematically ingrained. The reverse of indoctrination, the process of systemically, systematically pulling apart those beliefs, is sometimes called deconstructing. And deconstruction is having something of a media moment. This gives me hope for our species because it shows that humans are capable of the intellectual courage and honesty that our species needs, but which is far too rare. I'm not religious. I never have been. My mom insisted I question and challenge authority as a guiding principle. I never had to deconstruct. I don't know what that is like, but I admire the hell out of it. I often wonder if I had been raised and systematically told to believe X, whether I'd have had the courage to shake off that mind-forged manacle. Mm. Of course, I want to say yes, without a doubt, but that undersells the pressures and defense mechanisms that some religions, sects, and religious communities have evolved to keep people enthralled, a short list of which I include, of course, in The Founding Myth, uh, <laughs> which is a, hmm. a book, book by Andrew Seidel that you can purchase today. It's wonderful. Persecuting uh, outsiders, shunning doubters, punishing interfaith marriages, 
punishing apostates, sometimes with death, homeschooling or religious schooling, gathering together to shout down the doubts on a regular basis, approving some texts and burning others. Given these roadblocks, I think that deconstructing and leaving one's faith behind, or at the very least, moving away from a narrow and authoritarian faith, is goddamn remarkable, a true intellectual achievement. Consider this my love letter to anyone deconstructing their faith, questioning their beliefs imposed on them as, a ch as children. This grew out of a conversation I had with two ex-evangelicals on their delightful podcast, Go Home Bible, You're Drunk. But I've known many who've deconstructed their faith. Dan Barker has written several books on how he lost faith in faith, his journey from itinerant preacher to atheist activist. He also wrote the foreword to my book. Jerry DeWitt was a Pentecostal preacher who deconstructed an intellectual odyssey that landed him in the New York Times. Barker and DeWitt helped launch The Clergy Project, a support community for clergy who no longer believe. Two and a half years ago, The Clergy Project surpassed 1,000 members, both former and active clergy. That's right, the preacher in your pulpit might very well be an atheist who doesn't know how to escape. Mm. The younger generation is even more open about questioning their faith and leaving Christianity behind. Whether it's Rhett and Link, who use their platform to honestly discuss their deconstruction and deconversion, or Abraham Piper, son of influential Pastor John Piper, who's publicly deconstructing evangelical Christianity on TikTok, or Chrissy Stroop and Lauren O'Neill, who edited an eye-opening series of essays called Empty the Pews, Stories of Leaving the Church. Not everyone who deconstructs becomes an atheist. Red and Link identify as agnostics, and others consider themselves still Christian. But that's what critics of deconstruction seem most worried about. I've yet to hear a thoughtful objection to deconstruction. Instead, I've heard believers giving voice to their own deepest fears. They've, brought, they've bought into a system that tells people Life without that system is empty and meaningless. Your journey, my deconstructed friend, your mere existence, is a threat to that system. People stuck in the system can see that you've left and are happy, perhaps happier. And that is threatening. That's why we see so many snide comments from religious leaders chastising deconstructionists. I won't link to them here in my love letter, but they're not hard to find. I'm not out, of, out to court controversy, but to offer support. Faith over fear is a phrase we hear a lot these days, but how can faith be strong if it's never been questioned? What does it say about their belief if they're so scared of others questioning it? While an atheist opining on the strength of faith may seem disingenuous, one of the most well-respected Christian theologians of the 20th century, Paul Tillich, agrees. He wrote that, quote, doubt, doubt isn't the opposite of faith, it is an element of faith. Blind, unquestioned faith is not a universally shared value, even among Western Christians. Last summer, I redid my fireplace. The mantle, the hearth, the hood, the wall. I took everything out. I ripped it down to the studs. Turns out there was a leak in the roof that had rotted through several studs. Basically, the drywall had been holding it up. I was able to replace the rot with strong bones. Had I not done a bit of deconstructing, we'd have, we'd have had mold or worse, a collapse. If someone's faith is true, if they're correct and possess the absolute, the one absolute eternal truth, no amount of doubt or questioning can hurt it. Truth can withstand questioning and deconstructing. Error cannot. So deconstruction is only dangerous if there's a possibility of rot beneath the surface. And in that case, deconstruction is only dangerous to the rot. When you rip it out, you can build back better steal a phrase way way to go <laughs> believers who are and then we just sent Devin straight to hell believers who are confident in their faith should encourage everyone to engage in deconstruction at the very least the people who have the courage to question their religious beliefs deserve our respect not mockery but all I see from the ostentatiously pious is fear and mockery of those willing to question with boldness so I'd like all of those deconstructing and all those who've deconstructed only to find a faith that was but shadow. I want you to know that you are loved, not by a God, but by other people just like you, by the thousands, the millions of people who have left their religion behind. We're, we are in this together. We are not divided by our religion. We are not to be 
winnowed and separated into wheat and chaff, or lopped off the vine to be burned, we are united by our shared humanity. And there is a lot of love in the secular world. And if you've deconstructed to a healthier faith, free of authoritarianism, bigotry, sexism, and abuse, and if you've shed the tribalism and the need to impose and convert and separate the religious from the humane, you're doing your part to better the world too. Hot take that a lot of people didn't like. I think deconstructed evangelicals in particular have a lot to offer. The sect they've escaped from is the most toxic politically in the United States. The source, along with traditionalist Catholics and conservative Mormons, of the most of most of the authoritarianism, Christian nationalism, and threats to our pluralist democracy. We can learn from their experiences by listening to their stories. There are many groups out there working to limit the power of religion in our government, to keep church and state separate, to fight Christian nationalism, that can amplify these voices and which ex-evangelicals could contribute to in other ways. Secular Student Alliance, the Freedom from Religion Foundation, Black Nonbelievers, the American Humanist Association, Hispanic American Freethinkers, American Atheists, the Center for Inquiry, ex-Muslims of North America, and many more, including hundreds of amazing local groups that offer a more intimate and familiar community. Many of these local groups, such as the Atheist Community of Polk County in Florida, what? Andrew, are are filling the community and service space that has been until recently monopolized by churches. Mm -hmm. The Polk atheists clean up roads they've adopted, fight for LGBTQ inclusion, feed and clothe the homeless, and raise money for charity. You can be good without God, have fellowship without faith, and community without church, as Polk atheist puts it. Often filling these spaces is quite literal. I spoke to the Atlanta Free Thought Society on the Founding Myth book tour in their building, an old church on Church Lane. I'd love to move into an old church. I think it'd be great. Mm -hmm. uh, there are options, even if you're not a public speaker or writer who wants to share your personal story and help others leave faith behind. But perhaps the biggest impact you can have is to simply live a visibly happy life free of toxic religion. To show others struggling with the conflict the, and contradictions and bigotry and authoritarianism and misogyny and perversion of love and sex that there is another way to live this life. Again, this will always be seen as a threat to those still in the faith because they see that a different life is possible. I recently debated the existence of the biblical God with a Christian apologist. In my closing, I said words that I think are best to close out this love letter. Certainty is not truth. Comfort is not truth. Faith is not truth. It's scarier to think that the universe doesn't care what happens to you. It doesn't, but I do. And some of your fellow humans do too. We give life meaning, do good, love blindly, practice empathy, forgive readily, create beauty, learn with abandon, challenge tradition and injustice everywhere. Above all, find something bigger than yourself to fight for. Make a difference in this life and in this world because they're the only ones that we get. Thank you, Andrew Seidel, mm -hmm. for that Bravo. beautiful, beautiful love letter. Now, he did. I, I've Whoa. seen some fallout. So he, he took some straight-up shit on, on the angry Internet for being like, listen, if you were an evangelical and you're coming from a religion that's like the, the most toxic of religions – um, and you, you've, you know, found a church that's okay with gays and lets women serve as pastors and whatever. Like if you found a better version of Christianity, that's a step in the right direction. I'd rather have you be a moderate Christian, um, that affirms gay people and sees women and black folks as equal. Um, then, I'm not oh saying my God, I said black folks and, and Allie disappeared. Allie, come back! Oh no! Oh, <gasps> what? Did she... What did I what do? Magic! What magic was that? <laughs> She's not coming back either. Oh my, oh god. my god! We lost. Oh my Allie. god! Oh um, my god! Um. Oh shit! We're all dead. Anyway, please don't say white people, because then we'll both be gone. <laughs> 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 well, I said I said women several times, and and we're still here. Um, so... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> So let me see if I can get Allie back. But uh, but yeah, so he took some shit for um, 
<laughs> for for you know being like, hey, uh, I'm I'm happy if you're not a crazy evangelical anymore and you're a bit more moderate. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, but he can handle that shit. That's not bad shit. That's not, no, 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 that's no, not bad. no. He has not been canceled. And I, and I understand <laughs> where that comes from. I do. Yeah. There, there is a, there is a, a, a segment of people out there, and they, they have a point. I just disagree with their approach, but mm-hmm. you know, th- their point that like religion is toxic and it's ruining all the <laughs> things. Oh, God. Oh. Back. Don't say don't say black people again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I said I said <laughs> I don't even want to say it again. I was don't, like churches said, that are nice to gays and and women and and black and, people. And then you disappeared. Like, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, what the hell? Real bad there for a minute. I was like, it's oh your... shit! I made Allie disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, 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 I did a double take, and I was like, it's not me. Why am I seeing Satan? I, I saw the devil because I was like, oh man, I'm the devil now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. I don't know what happened. Oh god, that was crazy. Don't say black oh, people because uh, no, you know, I, I, it's kind of like no, candy no, man. Candy man. <laughs> like candy man. Don't say it because you know. Uh, River says, oh, beautifully written and well said. I'm sure it made all the conservatives all tingly inside. Yes, I, I, I bet it did. <laughs> I bet it did. They don't know what being feeling tingly inside it uh, means. No. <laughs> they they've never felt anything. Like so why anything. did he? Why did he take heat for you know allowing you know to say it's okay to have a if you right. find a kinder, gentler right. <laughs> religion? So uh, it's. They, uh, they deserve uh, what, credit too. What I was getting ready to say is that there is a segment of the, the atheist community um, that that very strongly believes that religion is the is the evil of the world, and that it, should it just disappear tomorrow, everything would be better off, um, and thus we should be working towards that. Um, and that uh, you know that all religion is bad, maybe not equally, but bad enough to the point where. You know, no, I no, I don't think it's just you know. I no, I don't think it's better that you've moved to a more liberal mm-hmm. version of Christianity or whatever. You know, yeah. I'm sure you've come across those people in in the movement. Um, like, and I get black it. and white like, and hardline, yeah. Right, I get it. It's the same kind of people that are like, um, like oh, the UU because they're kind of spiritual but not religious and it, mm-hmm. there's a lot of woo in there and I'm like yeah but you totally. know what they're not doing they're not fucking oppressing people and like yeah. fight, fighting against human rights and like I'm fine with that I will take them Honestly, any, day. Yeah. any day any day yeah any fucking day because for us to say for an for oh. an atheist to say oh well all religion should be a you know abolish then we would be no better than that sure. they, they are I so agree. come on let's let's yeah why can't we be friends why can't, why can't we, we be friends, friends? why uh. can't we <laughs> okay Devin. <laughs> oh my god hi Devin. so what's going on in your world you're all uh, to... wound up with the uh session starting sort of um i mean to, this was the first bills committee are being week. filed yeah bills are being filed it's pretty the first couple committee weeks are pretty bland, boring. There's six of them total this year um, before session starts on January 11th. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing too, too exciting happened overall. They, they usually have meetings to, you know, introduce plans for shit. Like departments will go before committees and say, this is our plan for the year or whatever. Um, a couple of the big things that did happen, though, is that this is the redistricting year. So right. we got the census data. So now we can redraw our uh, districts for the federal level and the state level. Am I fuzzy at all? No, it's you're just fine. Me. Nah, it's fine. With it. It's just us. Okay, I'm, going. Going. I'm going with yeah. it. I'm going with it. Okay. <laughs> I can okay, turn it so, off so you can't see yourself if that would be easier. <laughs> that would be I better. just get so distracted. Um, <laughs> so, and so what happens is that they have redistricting committees and there's supposedly equal numbers. Like it's supposed to be fair and balanced. 
so all parties are represented and whatnot. That's never the case. In fact, the GOP, who has been in charge of the legislature, legislature and the executive branch of Florida for over 20 some years now, um, was were holding di- redistricting meetings simultaneously. So you could only attend one or the uh-huh. other. Hmm. So mm-hmm. to kind of keep people out. Yeah. Because the Capitol is open, you are allowed to go into mm-hmm. uh, meeting rooms um, up to a certain point. They do have you distance inside. But um, th- it was interesting. They were saying a couple of things like, we are going to follow the law, which is something they shouldn't have to say. <laughs> right. um, but we know this, that there's a history of gerrymandering. There, there's a history is, of gerrymandering. Yes, and which, and this also right. c- comes at a time when every single lawsuit that uh, that was against any of the uh, any of the um, laws that were passed last year or any of DeSantis's executive orders have all been overturned to some extent. Um, so in the past couple of weeks, HB one, which was our anti-riot bill from last year that was signed right. into law. Um, was overturned or at least you know not overturned but it was blocked definitely uh, it was it was it's being reviewed right now um it's not being upheld whatever it is um Good. the mask mandates are now back up um there's it's, it's going back and forth but it looks like you know they may not be mask mandates may not be uh unconstitutional like the Santos wants them to be uh right these are the Carlos lawsuits Gamers. that we've been talking about sort of the last mm-hmm. Yeah, Carlos Carlos Guillermo Smith, the representative right. out of Orlando, um, filed a lawsuit against DeSantis and admin the administration to get the COVID numbers, just to get the health data, <laughs> so um, which is something we shouldn't have to sue for. Yeah, and not only did he like is able to go through with it, but the major media outlets such as CNN, NBC, AP, Reuters, Reuters, whatever it's called, they can all join in. They're allowed to join in on those. Is like. Uh, Co plaintiffs, I guess. Sure. That's how that is. Sounds good. Um, yeah. And also, sanctuary cities, which was a law that was passed two years ago, um, was deemed unconstitutional and was probably one of the most amazing um, takedowns of a of a legis- of any legislators at the, from the bench. So, pretty much, the judge said Senator Gruders, Joe Gruders, was racist relied on racist data bigoted data as did everyone else who supported this bill and it, it like it's flat out discriminatory sanctuary cities are totally fine to have like it was scathing is what it was so nice. um Brilliant. they had to, they had to make a point during the redistricting uh beginning of these redistricting committees that they are going to follow the law just so florida knows um because we've so you know the dollars in court so that's happening. Um, right, but hold on, because did they say, let me do a reenactment. Did they say, we're going to follow the law? <laughs> Is that what they did? <laughs> well, the guy, the senator who's running the one meeting. Did anybody look behind their back explicit. to see if they had their fingers crossed when they said it? No, there was no, there was no one looking behind backs. <laughs> but it was Ray Rodriguez who was doing it, who could not have a personality of his life dependent on it. So, um, <laughs> like, he's just... You're gonna follow the law on this one. <laughs> so boring. Um, Isn't he one so, of the worst down here? He he's south familiar? somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, I okay. think he's closer to Miami. Um, but uh, a couple of crazy bills that have been filed include one by Senator Hudson, who was the one who pushed the trans sports ban, um, trans sports ban through in the Senate. It's called "Offenses Committed by Aliens." That's the oh. title. Mm, yeah, fun times. Um, which is any any time there's a crime that's committed by a, a, an illegal alien, it's going to be reclassified to make it like a higher penalty and and whatnot. Just oh you know, my God. bullshit. Wow. Um, anything goes with this crowd. Um, mm-hmm. There's others about making all school boards uh, school board races partisan. Right. So you you have to usually there's no party affiliation, <clears throat> and that and uh, Stuff text messages from Senator Joe Gruders were leaked this past week as well, saying that this is totally political the way they're doing this. Like, there's a political, there's political uh, um, under underpinnings for this. This isn't mm-hmm. this isn't about being fair or anything. This is the reason why they're doing this and the redistricting mm-hmm. the way it is is because they're losing 
GOP mm -hmm. support. Right. Um, yeah. Probably the big one that was filed was HB 167 by Barnaby Webster. Mm -hmm. um, if you'll recall, filed the prayer before football games last year. Um, and this is uh, the Texas style abortion ban bill for Florida. Um, this was filed the day of our rally. We had a bans, bans off our bodies. If you can see my sign, I changed my, changed my sign out. Uh -huh. Bans off our bodies rally um, at the Capitol to welcome back all the legislators. Um, I was front and center behind the podium, so you can see me in blue amongst all the pink. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but, but yeah, so it's a Texas style abortion ban. Same thing as Texas, six weeks um which you're barely you're not barely you're barely even pregnant you're not even yeah. pregnant. Right. um it is it allows for private uh, enforcement so there can be bounty hunters um there is uh severability so like include included in it which is like if if part of the bill is found unconstitutional the rest of it is totally okay though it, they just can't stop the the whole bill can't be just thrown out the whole right. law can't be thrown out oh, yeah, um right. it's actually worse than texas because instead of um, you have up to six years instead of four years to uh, follow to file a suit against someone for assisting in an abortion. Oh, for um, fuck's sake! Yeah, right. and there's there's one more thing that makes it slightly worse than Texas, um, other than the fact that it's here in Florida with us. Um, but I'm I'm blanking on it right now. So, so yeah, that's a uh, that's that's what happened. Um, just. Things are did going you mention, great. Did you mention the bounty? I wasn't sorry. Yes, I wasn't yeah. paying attention because I. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 The bounty <laughs> is part of it. They, we, right. It's private enforcement, <laughs> which is which is crazy because. Um, private enforcement meaning. Uh, meaning that be so the so state you, is no longer in charge. They're not the ones enforcing this ban. It's going to be up to a private citizen. So right, therefore, so you, so you and oh I my God. Can, can rat on Devin and rake in some money. Yep. That is so fucked up. And because or the state is involved, both of you. and because the government's not involved, <laughs> therefore they're not, they they can't be sued. They can't claim it. They're, they have no like uh, jurisdiction. I'm not. Sure. I'm not a lawyer. I don't get but still, uh, this is so, so bad. It's real. No, bad. it's it's really bad. And so this is like the this was how this is why the Texas bill is so unique. Is because it's it's really hard for them to. Um, to fight it. Who are you gonna Who are you gonna sue? It's a private citizen. You can't sue yeah. the state. So like Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood can't go after the Department of the Health or the Surgeon General. They they can't go, but they, and they definitely can't go after every private citizen out there. Literally yeah. every citizen in the U.S. can do this. And people across the country have already been suing people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. already. Um, I did see a weird little uh, caveat to this. I don't know if we want to go down this rabbit hole. I just, I think, I, I, I'm still not like, I'm not clear on how this is working, but the Operation Rescue, I don't know if you've heard of them. They've been around for decades upon decades. They are the huge Christian anti-abortion uh, group. They're the ones who actually kind of uh, convince people to shoot abortion doctors. They're the ones always protesting. Um, they're really, they can get really violent. Um, yeah, so they, they do a lot of uh, clinic type protests. Um, they are suing... So there was a there was a, a opinion piece in like the New York Times or Washington Post about a, a doctor in Texas who said I fucking gave an abortion af to someone after yeah. six weeks. Yeah, you know what? Because it has to be done, and I'm medically obligated to help my patients. Mm -hmm. And so Operation Rescue went after the state uh, Texas State Medical Licensing Board, saying that you need to pull his license, which yeah. would now bring the state into that mm -hmm. equation. Mm -hmm. And now the state has some sort of like jurisdiction over this and they have some sort of say. So therefore Man. that public bounty hunter thing mm -hmm. might be bullshit if the state has to be involved to pull this doctor's license. So they are kind of foiled. Oh, the whole thing is convoluted. Yeah. The whole thing her. is just, hello, I'm back. The whole Hi. thing, the whole damn thing is just convoluted. Yeah. It's just, it's whole... so insane. Big, well, and let's be let's be very clear. What we're doing here is we lost dear Ruth and have loaded the court mm -hmm. with crazy right wing. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, nut jobs. Yeah, great work. Um, 
And so now it's time to test Row. Uh, mm-hmm. So we're going to do everything. We'll just throw yep. it all at the wall and we'll see Literally what sticks. Literally everything. Yeah, let's yeah. see what sticks. Yeah. And that, well, that's part of the plan is just to try to do everything. Yep. And at some, at some point, something will will stick. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's the the Mississippi 15-week ban or this bounty hunter bullshit, something's going to stick and it's going to just erode row mm-hmm. even more so. Yeah. Um, but like during at the so Nikki Freed, who is one of our um, gubernatorial candidates, she's the only elected Democrat at the executive level here in Florida. She's our commissioner, agriculture commissioner. Yeah. Um, she she attended the bands off our body thing, and it was every, everyone who was everyone in the on the Democratic side, um, like Eskimani. Rainer, mm-hmm. uh, Tadeo, who's also a gubernatorial candidate, um, a bunch of them. They 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 all came. They did this press conference, um, and at the same time, DeSantis is trying to like get attention away from it. So he announces a surgeon general at the same time, and then he files finally files for federal child aid, the the EB, PEBT money, right, to just like get attention away from our protests uh-huh. against the abortion stuff. Uh-huh. So, um, so yeah. Um, but that's, that's kind of like what's going on. Committee week obviously is over now. Um, but I do want to, can I read something? Please. If I can find it. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find it real fast. Okay. Okay. So this past week, the Sanus was, I don't know if you guys covered this already. DeSantis was asked during a press conference how he can say my body, my choice when it comes to mask mandates, but not when it comes to abortion. Oh no, I don't, I can't even wait to hear this. No. He was not prepared. It had no answer. And so he's, this is his exact words. Well, I think that the difference is between uh, the right to life is that another life is at stake. Whereas whether you're doing stuff is really, if you put something in your body or not, it doesn't affect other people. End of end of end of end of question. What? <laughs> that he he stumbled, he messed up. He had no idea what. Any, I think he went on after that. Um, that's but awesome. He, that's he really, could not. What... He could not square that circle, and it Good. was beautiful. Good. And people. I, Need to see how dumb he is, and yeah, uh huh. And so here that just eat that up, though. They love that. They love him. They do. I don't understand. He's so don't gross. He so yeah. Gross. And he always has that look on his face, like he just doesn't. He's not sure what room he's in. <laughs> you know, like he just he's has so that look on his face, like is this where I'm supposed to be right now? I don't think mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, uh, like I, I, I don't think so. He's so. He he is the mad the mad magazine guy or what is his <laughs> yeah, name? Mm-hmm. The, uh, that yeah. one, Ar- not Archie. Yeah. What's his name? Arthur B. Arthur. Shit, yeah, I, mean, I don't even know. Is. Somebody will say Ernest T. Chat. Ernest T. Something. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ernest P. Wow. Whirl. No, that's a very different. Ernest thing. P. Whirl. Vern. <clears throat> yeah. No, hey, but I mean, um. So yeah, he, God, he's so fucking stupid, and I, and I can't believe I can't believe he's our governor. But whatever, it, it is what it is. It is what it, it is. is what it is. Um, I'm really on like an abortion kick right now. I just yeah. think everyone should. Have well, see that. So this point. is the thing, uh, and I think we talked about this earlier when we kind of knew that this was going to happen here. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, what worries me is while all of this is going on, taking all of the oxygen in the room. What else are they going to be doing? And you already mm-hmm. hit some of those those highlights with the redistricting yeah. and stuff. Yep. Like while we're all out marching and protesting and fighting the good mm-hmm. fight about this thing, they're yeah. going to sneak through a whole bunch of other shit mm-hmm. that uh, yeah, that's not good either. Because Sarah, I don't know if you recall this time last year, we were thinking, mm-hmm. oh my god, some of these bills are actually pretty good. This might not be so bad after all. We're mm-hmm. being yeah. Pollyanna. <laughs> And yeah. uh, I, yeah. I feel never again, <laughs> never again, because I right now I like after this week, I kind of feel like where we were at mid session last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we haven't even started like right. we haven't started. Right. It's just going to get worse. So that's that. Yep. Um, 
But like, still do all the things. Call the- your legislators, raise hell, let them know what, that you're mad about. Like mm-hmm. you, because if you that that is the only uh, uh, calling and voting are the two mm-hmm. things that we have in the arsenal to communicate our wishes to our elected officials. The only the legal state. things we have, right? Mm-hmm. Really, really, the only legal things we have, right? Yeah. Um, so you got to do them. You and, gotta and do them. And I and I get I'm very cynical and I think that you know contacting mm-hmm. a legislature only, legislator only does so much it but does. it yeah. it does it did get them to file for the EBT for the federal uh, mm-hmm. child food money I can't remember I'm not thinking mm-hmm. right now but we we were the only state in the union that has not that had not applied for it and there was no intention of for DeSantis to do it right. but there was enough pressure enough people calling that he, he did he did cave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it went yeah. against, you know, his his image or whatever, but it's going to actually help thousands yeah, he of had, Floridians. He had to use it uh, to, to shiny jingle the keys over here away from this other thing over here, but it got done. Yeah, It got and, done. And that's a win for yeah. for kids. Like, for kids. Oh, what was that uh, Wisconsin or Michigan or some shit we talked about a couple weeks ago where they, where they oh, were like, oh, you don't want to spoil. Don't kids spoil. should, yeah, don't, don't get them spoiled. Yeah. Don't, don't, how dare you? How dare you? So yeah, um, I don't know if we want to talk about my other abortion stories for the week. Sure. Do you Let's have video? do it. Do I have no? I don't think I have that video. <laughs> Where's the video? Okay, guys. So oh, no, your three-hour city council meeting. I did not pull that video. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I dealt with crazies this week, like legit Christian nutbags. Um, um, excuse me. First of all, I have my first, own timer. Thank I you. have my own so timer. I will you don't need to time timer. me. Is that okay? I have my own timer. <laughs> Talk to me in that tone. Um, okay. So one of the ways that we are trying to, and I thought this, I, I'm going to be honest. I thought this is a stupid idea when I first got involved in this, but like Floridians for reproductive freedom, mm-hmm. one of their, one of their things that, that we do is um, have a local campaigns uh, work group. And what we do is we uh, go to city commissions, county commissions, soil and water districts. We don't care. And we ask them to pass resolutions or proclamations affirming reproductive justice, reproductive care, uh, that abortion is health care, is legal, it is safe, et cetera, et cetera. And we and this is kind of in I, I see the value in this now given the what we're dealing with, you know, nationwide and in Florida. And and places like Manatee County and Naples are actually trying to become sanctuary cities for the unborn. That's like the the new thing is to, to have your city proclaimed as a sanctuary city on the, for the unborn, even yep. if there is no abortion clinic in your county or city. It's bizarre, but um, go ahead. You, you're gonna say something. I was gonna say just d- explain the. It seems it should be self-explanatory, but explain the sanctuary yeah. city for the unborn. It's first. it's when a what's when a, a commission a, 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 a municipality will say that the, within the city or town limits we will not have abortions. It's not it's not really mm-hmm. like legally binding or anything, mm-hmm. but it 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 uh it goes to the environment of like of the of what you have to deal with to pass anything or to actually you know open a reproductive clinic in your town or what a reproductive mm-hmm. clinic that's already there um right. have to deal with and they, and they i guess they can be legally binding i think in texas some of them were and mm-hmm. so they had to like i think there's a planned parenthood in one small town that had to like stop <laughs> but it like stop very si- very clearly signals that municipality or county or whatever uh, governing body, it it uh, very clearly signals their intent. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, if you're going to come in and try to open up a clinic, and mm-hmm. that stuff's on the on the books, like mm-hmm. or maybe I don't want to open up my clinic yeah. here. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, and so th- this there's uh, both Manatee County and Naples are trying to pass sanctuary cities for the unborn resolutions. Um, and it's you've got to see the video of the Manatee County one. It's it's pretty crazy. They had protesters in the uh, Handsmaid's Tale thing. They they Good. gave awards to the they dropped awards on the floor as they as they walked out of the building, saying, um, you know, 
aunt aunt so and so or um commander commander so and so from the council they they, they gave it was very handmaidy um mm -hmm. but it it was, it was interesting so we as a as a counterattack are trying to get re resolutions for cities to actually do the opposite and affirm reproductive care and one of those cities was Tallahassee and it was going through it was everyone's unit we've you know they were going to pass it unanimously and um we about and so on and this just happened this past wednesday and an hour before the commission meeting started we were told that it was pulled from the agenda and um i wasn't gonna i wasn't i wasn't supposed to talk i was just gonna go and, you know s you know support and celebrate um hmm. but i went and because it was pulled from the agenda we had to wait till the very end of the meeting like four hours later to say anything um and as i walked into the building there were protesters out front um a bunch of anti anti-choice people and they were yelling at people coming in are you pro-choice are you anti-choice or blah, 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 pro-life i guess whatever their turn of phrase is right. pro-choice or pro-life that's what they say um and it was just like these people were just trying to walk into city hall leave them the hell alone um there was uh pam olson who is the head of the international house of prayer ihop um was there she's kind of a a, a florida a hardcore right winger um crazy nut job she was there saying that we we are victorious god is victorious here in tallahassee today uh they're just mm. railing against the capital they're just angry about what's going on at the capital and that's not our problem or whatever god won and so i walked in the council meeting i i, I go to the commission meetings a lot I, I don't know it's interesting and there were a lot of people that i didn't recognize and i, I sat down i'm like this is going to be a shit show. And so I put in a speaker card because <laughs> I knew it was going to go down mm -hmm. and um, did it ever. So I'm going to put together a video compilation later, but um, the first speaker goes up and she's, and they go, you have three minutes. And she goes, I brought my own timer. If that's okay. I'm like, what, the, who, the, why, what, what what's the point is your timer is God's timer different than everyone else's. I don't know. Um, and it then was her she iPhone. like lit she just it wasn't, on her iPhone. It, was, it wasn't like it was like lighting up or anything no, or doing something crazy special. it was fucking stupid but <laughs> she was probably the sanest one sadly but it, but she went down the whole you know hitler killed babies she went full godwin yeah. hmm. um just you know we kill you know animals kill their kids blah 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 we shouldn't be doing this shit and that's whatever. about as far as i got in the video <laughs> we're being honest I couldn't. I just couldn't. I don't that have. Was, and first, that was the. I don't have the emotional bandwidth to pro, to deal with all of this shit right now. And I I I want to come back to that in a minute. But go ahead. Uh -huh. And 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 then um another another guy gets up and he's just talking about like thank you for taking care of the sewage issue or something like that. The poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> the poor guy. Him. Just like shit, he's dude. I'm sorry. Ones. He's one of the ones walking in that they were like, are you for or against murdering babies? I just want to thank you like, for taking man. care of sewage. <laughs> 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 and, and then uh, the uh, uh, this guy who looks like he's 12 years old comes up and he goes, I just want you all to know that I was praying for you beforehand. We are all made in the image of God and blah, blah, blah. Went full on book of revelation, oh, apocalypse, wow. oh, babies God. dying, baby, 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 God's image. blah. blah. And it, it just went crazy. And I'm just... And I don't know what my face looked like, but John Harris, who's been on the show before, he looked over at me and he goes, Is he like texting make... you like, Devin, you need to fix your face? He looked over at me and he's like, Devin, you, you, are, you gonna, are you okay? You're going to make it? I'm like, no. I, no, I, no. I think that was the point that I put my speaker card in. Like I had to like get up and like do it. I was like, I can't. I can't do it. Um, and then another guy dressed in a Boy Scout uniform, which was really bizarre. I went up mm -hmm. and he talked about this is the luciferian influence of blah -de da de da plandemic was mentioned oh, he brought up plandemic um, something about a his a cousin of his got a shot and then went blind oh and i'm like God. what the fuck does this have to do with They're abortion shit up. And, wow. but then he, but you know went back to killing babies this is right. again it just vomiting hillary clinton, words. i believe hillary clinton was mentioned i'm not i'm not kidding i it, at this point, it was I, I zoned it out because I just it was so off the wall, fucking crazy, just completely crazy nut job. And so 
at that point I go up and I'm just like, I'm just really disappointed in you kids. Um, <laughs> and, and, you really? As your mother, I, I'm very disappointed mother. in you. Yeah. And the mayor knows me. He's like, Dr. Graham, welcome. And I go, mayor? <laughs> and I don't know. Like, I, I tried to be, you know, reasonable. That's all I wanted to be. And I just wanted to say I'm disappointed this was pulled and I hope this can be brought back again. I said, I, I'm supposed to be, I, I know you expect me to be here because I'm the American atheist chick, but I also, this is personal for me. And I went into like, I gave a little story. Yeah. And then John Harris went up and he's like, LGBTQ rights and repro rights are heavily intertwined. And mm-hmm. this is an attack on the LGBT community as well. Lo- my friend Lauren from Planned Parenthood, you know, gave a very impassioned speech. A couple other Tallahassee activists also were like, did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. And then another nut job went up and he mentioned abortion a couple times. So I think he was one of theirs, mm. but then he looks at a black commissioner and he goes, you're from Africa, right? Oh, what? And she goes, no, it's- I'm from Quincy. Oh my God. <laughs> And bitch, I'm I like, will cut you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm like, shit. What the fuck just happened? What, what the, the actual fuck just happened here? Oh my. And I. And and so this is this is like what could have happened. They could have just kept it on the agenda, voted on it. They would have had these people bitching regardless. They yep. would have had the crazy speaking about it, no matter what. Yep. But now that they've had this, they this has been brought to everyone's attention. They're going to have more crazies come in, give yeah. more crazy talks, we, you know, and it's just gonna, it's just going to go on and on and on and on. Yeah, right. And so, I'm pissed about this because they are all they all agree on this. They all think this is very important. And when they brought it up the week before during like the sharing of ideas section section mm-hmm. of the of the session, it was very much yes. We all agree that there are attacks on. Um, reproductive rights in this country and we want to be uh, cognizant of that and we want to affirm that this is the law of the land and this is something that we agree with um so yeah now it's going to go on and on and on so that's this was supposed to be easy this was supposed to be an easy win for us yeah and i think it's still going to be a win it's just going to be an awkward one but we got some good stories from it it's just one of those things like Anytime you, you set up a drag queen story time, like those people are always going Here to they come. come. They're going to come out of the and shadows. Torches and pitchforks and yeah, rabble, rabble, mm-hmm. rabble, rabble. It's going to happen. So either we show some leadership and do the right mm-hmm. thing in mm-hmm. spite of that rabble. Yeah. Um, or step aside. Yeah. I, and so that's. And so I, like, honestly, I, I seriously thought this was a, a really dumb idea to, like, do these local mm-hmm. campaign type things. I, I, I really was on the fence about it. I am all for it now. So if anyone out there would like to have this, something like this in their community, please yes. reach out. It's, I mean, you might get some pushback, but um, these are passing across the state at the moment. Wilton Manor's just passed one. I think Bra- Brevard, Broward County just did as well. There's a there's a, quite a few places that are doing this, and and then will be more will be coming out in the in the coming months. So, I think it's important. I think it's important to make your voice heard. <sighs> Sorry for being really. Um, well, uh, before before we <laughs> jump off today. of this topic, though, before we jump off this topic, we're never not going to talk about killing babies here. Uh, <laughs> 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 Okay, so I'm serious now. Okay. Um, okay, so so you talked about, like, if you if this is something you want to do in your town, uh, that's a thing we want to encourage people to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can reach out to you at devon.gram at atheist.org. Oh, my God. That's, there it is. That's my email address. You can do that right now. <laughs> we have these resolutions already, like, we have them written out. They actually are kind of like a la carte type menus like if you want to really focus on you know health and safety of women we have a little sections that you can add for that and i i, I mean i i believe most of the electeds in this at the local levels with some exceptions Polk county um sorry. are so generally 
are generally like for these type of things. And I, right. but and now is the time for them to make it, make it known. One of the things that I thought of when you were like, oh, this is kind of stupid. Um, the, the proof of concept, I think, and, and this is a little bit different because in, in the, the, the work that Equality Florida is doing with LGBTQ stuff mm -hmm. at the municipal level um, is, is uh, beyond a, um, uh, what's the word, when you do a proclamation, beyond mm -hmm. just a proclamation, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. policy setting thing. Policy, yes. right? So mm -hmm. Equality Florida has been going around to various municipalities and mm -hmm. counties in the state of Florida mm -hmm. and saying, hey, listen, really shitty that our state won't protect Floridians on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity explicitly mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the state law, constitution, whatever. Yeah. So with a lack of a federal law or a state law protecting those people, it would be wonderful if you – the city of Orlando or the city yep. of Tallahassee would pass mm -hmm. a resolution uh, totally. in your city affirming that your city employees, that the people mm -hmm. in your city will be protected on that basis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so that's like, for me, that's the proof, proof of concept, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, that would then in theory supersede and, and uh, you know, give, Give extra protect. You can give extra protections. Home rule, yeah. Uh, home, yeah. yeah, when home rule matters, uh, when when they let Not us. Not so have much home in the rule. state, but you know. It, but right, it's that. Yeah, yeah same idea. Um, so I, I wanted to talk about uh, not having emotional bandwidth to handle all of this stuff, um, as I've mm -hmm. got so much shit going on, and mm -hmm. with my mom being having been in the hospital and all of that going in my mind, and, and mm -hmm. all of the other things that we haven't talked about yet. Um, yes. The uh, the topic of like what to do about all of this. Um, River was talking about this a little bit in the chat. I would recommend, um, a, a, especially if you're not, you, if you're not the go out with a you know, a sign and march kind of person. Because that is not me. Because that's yeah, that's not everybody. It's not me. Uh, and that's okay, right? It takes mm -hmm. all types. Um, organize a Zoom. Uh, uh, letter writing call or phone mm -hmm. banking call, right? Mm -hmm. Where you just bullshit on Zoom and then mute yourself and call your senator or whatever. And then, mm -hmm. you know, where you can chit chat with other people, um, uh, like-minded folks while, while you're writing letters or, or making phone calls or whatever. Um, and the phone calls, I know I've talked about this before, but like uh, uh, as a person with like high anxiety, um, let me tell you, don't don't let this one get to you. It's it's not as big a deal as it feels like. It it's feels like holy all. shit, I'm calling a senator, but it's no. Nope. You're you're not calling a senator. You're calling their aide. You're calling and their, their aide, high school intern. Yeah, and their it's aide like, is just like checking yes, no. Mm -hmm. No, seriously, That's it's literally it's, it. And not only that, but I have called rep. I have called like offices of you know representatives and stuff, and they have actually picked up the phone. Yep. And don't let that scare you, because right. some of them are as are dumber than we are. <laughs> Seriously, it does not take a genius to get into office. Like I no, cannot, I cannot, express, exactly. I cannot stress this enough. You can be anyone can anyone can run for office. Anyone can win. Obviously, we've seen that at all levels of government. But they are, you are better at things than they are. And never forget that. Yep. They just happen to have a little rep or senator in front of their name. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, call and and say, this is the particular bill I'm calling about. I am mm -hmm. in favor or not in favor uh, of this particular bill. And uh, if you do happen to get the rep or senator on the line, uh, great. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. If you, they, if, love, they, love to, they love to talk to you. If no, you have a personal story. Mm -hmm. That is oh, relevant totally. to the whatever the topic at hand is. If if you can talk about how like I had an abortion when I was eighteen, uh, mm -hmm. and this is how that changed my life, mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff. Um, you know, be brief. Don't don't talk to her off. Uh, you know, A but but still, like yep. 
uh, personal Say stories are very meaningful and, and mm-hmm. impactful. Um, but otherwise, like at the end of the day, they're really just trying to get a pulse of like their constituents and how they feel. Mm-hmm. Really. And agreed. And and this is something else you can do because October 2nd is going to be another women's march that's being planned across the country. Um, a lot of cities here in Florida and counties are going to be holding them. And, and if you have, uh, and, and there's going to be a ton of county and city commissioners that are going to these. Mm-hmm. And if you're one of those towns that does not have a proclamation on reproductive rights or LGBTQ rights or, or whatever, there's the time to go to them and be like, hey, I noticed you're at this women's march right now, and yet you haven't said anything out out loud about this. Right. Why it would be really great if you could, you know, make this known instead of coming here and getting your picture taken and then not mm-hmm. doing jack shit about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um I think I think that's really powerful. And and I, it it it's, it might be scary, but you know what? It's it's not like don't. It's yeah. so empowering. It and really the, is. Yeah. At the end you of the might day, be, you're like, gonna be peeing your pants. You may be peeing your pants beforehand, but you're gonna be like on a freaking high the rest. Of the yes. Day. Yes. It, you really exactly. will be. It's so yep. good. It's yep. worth it. I agree. That's that's my rant. For the day. That's your rant for the day. Is that it? Is that all you got? Do you get anything else? Do I, have no? I don't know. Um, I, I have one more uh, oh. that I forgot earlier because I didn't write it down. Oh. Um, we have been talking about uh, for the past, I don't know, a couple months that the atheist community of Polk County received a grant from Spectrum mm-hmm. for $5,000. Oh, uh, $5,000. <gasps> and uh, and that was uh, it's an employee grant. So the way that works is an employee of Spectrum, Donna Windsor, who's part of our group. Good job, Donna. Good job, Donna. uh, Referred us uh, to to their program. And they uh, asked some questions about, you know, what we do for the community and and such. And we talked about our food insecurity programs and that sort of of thing. And so they picked us. Well, and I hope I hope like hell you guys will be able to hear this. I know we had trouble with this the other time the other night. Um, They. Uh, they 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 selected us, and then they worked out this whole big thing where we did one of those giant check presentations, which is so fucking great. Um, at giant check. Caldwell Elementary in uh, you don't get to keep them at Caldwell Elementary in Auburndale, which is uh, the school that we we work with for our Weekends Without Hunger uh, mm-hmm. program that sees us take food to uh, you know uh, students and their families who are food insecure over the weekends. So, I'm going to play. This is um, uh, thanks to Cindy, who recorded this off. <laughs> this is not high tech stuff here, but thanks to Cindy for getting it for us because I haven't uh, I haven't seen uh, a, a proper version of it from Spectrum yet. But this Which ran on on Bay News Nine. Ooh, nice. Ooh, you wanted news? Check this out. Mm-mm. Boost today for a nonprofit in Polk County. A group called the Atheist Community of Polk County got $5,000 from Spectrum as part of its community grant program. The Atheist Community Group helps feed families and at risk kids. The group was nominated by a Spectrum employee who volunteers with the group. Spectrum started the community grant program in part because of the variety of programs where employees volunteer. And one of the things that we recognized was a lot of our employees give their time and their talents to a, a number of nonprofits throughout the nation. And these nonprofits, you know, they step in and they fill that gap on a number of social issues. With this grant, um, we'll be able to add an additional 10 families a week um, to our um, service um, we, where we provide them with food to get through the weekend. And Rango Wade, the director of the ACPC, says 10 families may not seem like a lot, but for those families, it means everything. Spectrum is the parent company of Spectrum Bane is nine. Oh, that's so good. That's yeah. awesome. I'm gonna say I did not recognize Keith in a button down shirt. <laughs> it's like who's that? <laughs> Keith. Um, I should add at good. this point, this might be a good transitional point here to talk Uh-oh. about. Oh no, we lost it. I'll wait. Come back. 
I need to put like some hold music back in the queue to play while we're waiting. Doo, doo, doo. Back. I'm back. Um, there you go. Okay, so uh, this might be a good transitional point to 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 move into big announcement time. Oh. Unless anyone has any further. Baby. Unless anyone has any further oh. business. Uh, <laughs> no further business. Okay. Your Honor. No further business. <laughs> uh, I packed my gavel, so I can't okay. gavel you. In. Um, okay, so I want to say first, um, Rainbow Wade, who you saw there in that clip, is our newest uh, director for the Atheist Community of Polk County. Her hair is amazing. She, oh, she's she is so just, purple. <laughs> I, know, I love I it. Wish I, could I, lo I love I love that I color. Um, she has just jumped right into the role and has Good been uh, taking nice. things on and, and running with it. Um, so I'm so proud of her for for just jumping right in, feet first. Um, so it is uh, it is time to uh, announce that this will be the final, very likely final episode of Free Thought in Florida because <laughs> two of the three of us are leaving the stage. And now it's a contest. Who is it? Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, damn. I wish I still have the phone connected. I would have people call in and guess. In the chat, throw your chat. Who do you think? I've already posted about it. These people know. Yeah. They know. Okay. So, um, so Allie, you've talked about this uh, in the Patreon segment of the show that you are moving to Colorado in the Denver area and you just uh, closed on your house. Yay. Today. That's a big that fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was it's, fast. It's sold fast. It closed fast. And well, I, cl I closed on the house that, in Florida that I'm leaving. So Keith, Keith says he's got to dress up once in a while. Do it all the time, Keith. <laughs> Do it all the time. <laughs> um, so the second person leaving is... Who is it? Who is it? It could be anybody. <laughs> Who? Me. So uh... I, I am also moving to the Denver area. So Allie and I will be together. Uh, in the same house. And it's one, crazy. Maybe, if, I can't, <laughs> if I can't figure this all out, it might be. <laughs> we'll both be in a hostel if... I legit called Allie today and I was like, so your son's Just basement, is that? <laughs> uh, and I was right. like, yeah, you yeah, know, well, I'll ask him. I'm sure he'll be okay. And I thought you were serious. No, I was joking. <laughs> Don't play with me. Oh, Don't play with me like that. But, um, but yeah. So, so, uh, so I accepted an offer uh, to work for the Denver Zoo. So I'll be working at the Denver Zoo um, <sighs> soon-ish. Our house is on the market. We've got somebody coming to look at it tomorrow, thinking that might be the one. And you we'll know what, guys? You. It's me, because I'm moving to Polk County. <laughs> oh, <we need laughs> it's a weird circle. Here. We need you down here. The circle of life here we got. So I here. suggested <laughs> that Devin continue Free Thought in Florida. And Devin said no. <gasps> oh. I thought you were joking. <laughs> what? Okay, here's the thing. If it's if I continue this, it's going to be me on my cell phone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> I'm really drunk right now. It's Friday. I don't know what time it is, <laughs> but it's live. But I'm live. Woo! You can't do that when I have a mouthful of rum. Because <laughs> it's not going to be quality. It's not going to be professional. <laughs> Barely wearing a shirt right now, apparently. <laughs> um. <laughs> Listen, I I would I would offer to produce it. Here's the thing. Um, so I have no idea what the future holds. Like. Um, Denver has a. But I know a, who holds my hand. <laughs> many things about you. you. Um, so Denver has okay. a very robust secular community, to, to my knowledge. Um, everybody has said, like, wow, you're going to love it. Like, they have a building and things. Like, it's cool. Weed. Oh, um, nice. No, no, no. That too. But, oh. uh, <laughs> but like, the, the secular hub has has a building. Uh, which is like, that's been the dream. Uh, had we stayed here, that would have been uh, the, the plan here. And it may still yet. Uh, the atheist community of Polk County is in good hands. And, it um, is. It really is. It is. And Bless them. 
So what happened was, I kind of finally tell the story publicly. <laughs> what happened was the only thing that had really been holding us here was that we loved our kids' school. Mm-hmm. And you both have heard this story, so just pretend like it's new. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> we, bo- we loved our kids' school. And <laughs> I didn't want to do, like, the, oh, uproot the kids and move them across the country and all that stuff. Like, I just, I, I didn't want to do that to them. Um, and we're in a magnet choice school. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really good school. And yet, when, mm-hmm. when we sort of started going down the path of, like, uh, what led us to this moment, um, Governor DeSantis uh, decreed that no one shall enforce mask mandates. And so mm-hmm. we decided to pull our kids out of that school that we love so much, losing our spot, losing, mm-hmm. losing their spot in this choice school. Yep. So at that point, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, well, I I guess that one thing that was holding us here isn't really holding us here anymore. It's a sign. Where do you want to (laughs) go? Like, where do you want to go? Let's go. And Colorado has has been on the the list for a while. That's something we've wanted to do for a while. So that's that's what led us to this moment. Thank you, Governor DeSantis, I guess. Oh, but let me tell you the beauty of... um, so, so the area that we're hoping to move into is the Cherry Creek School District, mm. uh, and right, and Cherry Creek's like the school district. The, that is the school in, district. Right? Yeah. Um, on their website, it says like your student is required to wear a mask at all times. All teachers, all faculty, everyone's required to wear a mask at all times. Mask, 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 masks. If you would like to opt your child out of this mask requirement, you have the following options. GTFO. You you may enroll your child in virtual school, or you may homeschool them. Period. The end. GTFO. That is the opposite of Florida. What is that? It's so nice. I can't wait. Side note, did you guys even talk about our new Surgeon General and how his new policy is Mm -hmm. that if you test positive for COVID, you can still go to school if you're if you're not asymptomatic. Our yeah, our our that's the uh, dumbest shit ever. Our school district here in Polk uh, uh, just announced that 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 that's their policy. That's the if you're asymptomatic, the then whole, but that means you're a contagious. That means you're still positive. You're fucking contagious. The whole thing about this this whole COVID thing from jump has been that people are running around asymptomatic and highly contagious. That's the whole goddamn point. That's why this thing is as bad as it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so listen. Just hold on. Just hold on. Devin, I'm so sorry that we're leaving you. I know you're still in denial. <laughs> um, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's I'm fine. I'm not depressed. Uh, another thought that I had was maybe we continue a show, a show, mm-hmm. right? That's not, maybe not regional, right? So like this one was, we very specifically wanted to focus on Florida things. Mm-hmm. And and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do, uh, I, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do like for American Atheists? I have to pitch this to Sam. Mm-hmm. Um, but like an, an American Atheist show that mm-hmm. is nationwide where we check in with various state directors all throughout the country mm. week from week to week and talk to them about what's going on in their area. Fun I think times. that would be a good idea. That would be a fun time. Yeah. So mm. I don't know. The end of the day is like, so this is the, this is the show is, is ending um, because we have to sell this house and get our good shit night, packed everyone. up. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, she has clothes on. Look. Oh, okay. I do have clothes on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <clothes> on. <laughs> What a disappointment. No. Uh, we <laughs> so we have to get our house packed up and like do do all the things and, and get you know get moved. Um and so I don't know what the show will be when we when we land and get set back up. I don't know yeah. I don't know that there's enough Colorado stuff to talk because Colorado seems like a pretty chill place, uh in, a, fair, chill. in a few different ways. Um mm-hmm. so what's, What's Tell the show going to be? What are we going to do? I don't know. We'll figure that out. In the meantime, you can follow me at saratalk.com. 
or callmesarah.com. Either one of those has all of my stuff. And so when I have a new project that launches, you'll find it there. Um, uh, to the technicalities for patrons, we will leave the Patreon thing up for a bit and not charge you because we're not producing any new content. But if you're, you know, uh, cruising through the back catalog and, and uh, listening to uh, all of those things, we'll keep that up for a little bit. Uh, and the same with the with the feed, um, but otherwise we're we're gonna wind this thing down. Unless Devin wants to take it over, in which case <laughs> I'll consider because mm-hmm. I have nothing else to do with my life. Um, you know what I won't if I did. You know what I won't be using hmm. wirecast. Wirecast. No, Lord, no. Use uh, <laughs> what is it we used for the holiday thing? That one works. Streamyard, well. that was really good. Streamyard, yeah, that worked pretty good. I, uh, if I had yeah. already sunk six hundred dollars into this fucking software, I would bail. Fuck on you, it Wirecast. Too. But let me tell you, um, we have we, our, no, no, no. This is the penultimate show. The last show is the fuck you, Wirecast show. <laughs> <laughs> they have been very helpful. Um, the mm. so Still the Satan. last time we talked, yeah, that's that's not. I don't think that's Wirecast. Mm. Um, I last, think it is. The last time we talked, uh, I had recreated the show file from scratch. Right? Mm-hmm. And my test was going to be, if I use that file again and it crashes, that tells me something. Mm-hmm. right? Like if I have to recreate it every time, there's something. And you'll notice we were running a... We don't have a banner or any oh, of that stuff. Where's the little logo go? I had that on there. There was the logo. Bloop. There it is. Um, well. we, yeah, so we're running like a super stripped down version. There's not uh, a lower stripped third. Stripped down indeed, y'all. <laughs> Keep your top on. There's not a lower <laughs> third. There's not a scroll <laughs> ticker at the bottom. Our names aren't on the screen. Like, I cut it down to the bare minimum. And it seems to be doing okay. So, in theory, I slowly add those elements back in, and we figure out what the hell's causing the problem. But the show's over, so now we don't have to worry about that. <gasps> Until we start a new show. Hmm. Surprise, everyone! Let's see what's going on in the chat. Everybody's <laughs> upset, I'm sure. Um, I'm Heidi upset. says, too many changes. I'm sad. River says, I'm going to miss you both. Both? Pressure There's three is, of us here! Pressure is on, Devin. <laughs> but you're pressure still here! Yep. It's I won't the do Devin show. Can you imagine... The chaos. <laughs> you can. You're gonna open it with a hymn and and then. Yes. No shit. No shit. No shit. <laughs> this past week, I broke out into the doxology via text with someone else. Oh, is this? And it was amazing. You sent me. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most amazing thing. I found a fellow doxology addict. Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's, what is I doxology? Like rare Dox what, what is doxology? On? Praise I'm God from whom all blessings flow. Is this a white thing? Praise it's a white. Him. No, no. Well, the the girl I was texting with was not white. Oh. I don't want to say what she was because we might lose somebody. <gasps> oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I think the got it. I'm looking for is not white <laughs> not white um what he say not what he say he say oh no God. but yeah no doxology it was like what we ended every doxology. every service, service. Oh, no. hmm. yep it's it's a bizarre it's bizarre like hmm. if, i don't even know where the, the... It, like legit it's just the song we end with mm-hmm. like, that's all it is it's the song we end with it's it's okay the, End of the I guess day, every end of the song. yeah church we do that too and it would last like 10 minutes the whole oh, freaking Lord. song oh doxology is like a minute if yeah, that we it's would like, end with we would end the service with a song but then it would just go on and on and everyone oh would just God. you know oh. get the spirit and it would never oh. end and i'm like no, we I'm, didn't looking, have spirit. No, I'm like no, look was... can we go eat you know <laughs> like, so that's, that's how we did it so we were like hungry. okay 45 second song and then we're going to go be assholes to the waitress at the, right that's working on the Shonies. Right. Shonies or Sizzler or whatever um wow, where did we go cracker golden World. golden corral or something ponderosa yeah. Rex. ryan's 
Racks. Yeah. Oh my god, I haven't heard that in a long time. I think there's still one left. Like, racks? In Ohio, some no, racks. One left in Ohio. There's like one. Oh my god. I want everyone to know that currently Jeb Bush is at a CVS and he locked his keys in his van and has to use, has to use his phone in the CVS to uh, call someone to help him. Okay. I want everyone to know this. <laughs> Let's see. Are we back? Guess who's back? Yeah, we're back. Okay, we're back oh, on oh, Facebook. Shit, we're back. YouTube okay. can fuck itself. God damn it. um, also, uh, what's this place? Wirecast? They can fuck themselves too. They can go fuck. <clears throat> Fuck you, why? I think, I think whatever. <laughs> I think whatever the new version uh, of the show, whatever the next show that I do, okay. is gonna not be Wirecast. I think I'm just I gonna. Think that... I think I'm just gonna. Oh, yeah. Alex here, Alex here. Alex here. I'm just gonna eat the loss and. And I won't have all the special fancy things that I like to like on the screen or whatever, but this isn't worth it. This I'm is sorry, bullshit. Streamyard is actually pretty good. I could yeah. even do it if yeah. I can do it. Anyone can do it. <laughs> so it sounds to me like what you're saying is you can continue free thought in Florida on Streamyard. I'm thinking. I'm. It's Think it's, about a, it. it's a consideration. About it. I will not do this by myself. No. I will not. She will okay. not. That's my serious face. Um, I will make my recommendation during the Patreon segment. <gasps> oh, you have to be a Patreon, a patron to, to get that. Yeah. For a whole, for <laughs> but don't whole, join whole because we're turning it off. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're you're screwed. You're all fucked. <laughs> um, I was about to ask Devin, what do you have going on? What's going on in Devin World? What's going on in Hotland? Hotland. Okay. Um. Well. Uh. Not too much. I've actually been pretty busy at work. Um. So, but we did. I think I mentioned this last time. We got a grant from the AHA to continue our snack pack slash hygiene pack program with Yay. the Trinity United Methodist Church in downtown Tallahassee. Um. We are submitting. I just submitted a grant to actually expand that. Um. I'll let you know how that goes. Or will I? I don't know. This show's ending. You'll never know. <laughs> um, but we. But our next event is going to be October 23rd. We are very, we're being very careful with in-person events. We have to, you know, because COVID isn't over yet. <laughs> and it's not going to be for a long time. But October 23rd, we're going to have another hygiene pack party um, at a location. It's going to be my, it's going to be my house. Um, but it's going to be for families and kids. So oh, kids and families can come and um, the kids are going to pack hygiene packs. I just got all the supplies this past week and the adults are going to watch and laugh at them and drink. Um, <laughs> uh, pizza, we'll maybe watch a movie. If you have a secular movie or show that you would recommend for children, you know, um, I'm not good at TV. So... Uh, <laughs> I think that's it. I, re I, I, I'm kind of focusing more on, I guess, I guess, American atheist legislative type stuff. Mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. There's just not much that we can do at the local level beyond the packing things because of COVID. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good ball. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, Look, yeah, I, you're busy. I know. <laughs> you um, have, you yeah, stuff going on too. So I can just give a quick blurb about FVB. Um, onboarding a few new um, teams for the food security project, um, and then we're gearing up for our annual appeal, and that's it for for FVB right now. Um. I am attending virtually this weekend, uh, the women of color beyond belief. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'll be, uh, I'll have my laptop and I'll be packing, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm so bummed that I'm not able to attend in person. Cause it was amazing. Um, the first year that I went like a couple years ago. Yeah. It was, yeah, that's right. You, I, yeah, I, I didn't know you then Devin. So, Oh, I thought you said, oh, okay. Gotcha. 
you're going this way. You're going this time. Yep. So it'll be on Zoom. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We do have our um, Yvonne who is um, heading up uh, the Humanist Action uh, for Ghana. Will be there speaking. Um, oh, cool. So yeah, that will be great. That'll be awesome. I think you can still register for that still for the online. Vir yeah, virtually, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. If you go to w so, wocbeyondbelief.com. Yeah. I'm going to say that out loud. It's not a secret. Women of Color Beyond Belief, or you can go to Black Nonbelievers um, oh, website as well. It's being put on by Black Nonbelievers and Mandisa Thompson. Thomas, God, Mandy, Mandisa, don't kill me. Mandisa, <laughs> Mandisa. Right now. I am clipping this out and sending it to her. <laughs> Jesus Christ, no. I'm sorry. Mandisa is amazing. Uh, I was about to say, but yeah, so um, she's done so, so, so much hard work. Um, so I know this conference yeah. is going to be great. Cool. We have sent in our final five for the selection of the Secular Student Alliance uh, scholarship. So hopefully we'll have final some five. announcements soon uh, on what uh, uh, what those results look like. Um, Can you see how many applicants you got or no? Uh, yes. And we. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll be happy to talk to you about that uh, offline when okay, I can, so when much. I can look it up. Um, okay. <laughs> we are charging ahead with our weekends without hunger program. If you are local to Polk County and you want to get involved with that, um, go to polkatheists.org and and look up the information for that. Um, we get together once a week and uh, pack up these weekend food supplies for for our students and families who are experiencing food insecurity. And uh, it's a it's a real easy service event. Um, packing the bags is not a difficult thing. Anybody can do it. Uh, it's a good time to, you know, we're busy, still wear our masks and social distancing and all of that stuff. Um, but uh, it's a good way to give back and, and uh, hang out with Rachel and Keith and Rainbow and uh, and do some good. And uh, we're also still doing Street Warriors uh, as a weekly project that we do where we go out and for, take hot meals to folks who are experiencing homelessness throughout uh, various places in Polk County. So that's a thing you can get involved in, too. PolkAtheists.org. That's it. I'm, that is I feel, it. I feel kind of sad. <laughs> Becca is showing me pictures of kittens that she will not let me have. This is unacceptable. Becca. Back. Kittens, no. wait, yes. I feel, I feel, I feel some type of way signing off for the last time. I don't, I don't like. Should that. we give you a moment? Should we like log off right now and like? Just some time? <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> um, but hey, uh, to everybody who's come on this journey with us, uh, the last, I don't know, what has this been? A year and a half. We've been doing this show. Mm -hmm. Sixty something, some odd. I don't know. Some. I don't know. know. I know. I started like in January or February, so I'm. I just I'm show up. The new kid. So right, yeah. Right. Uh, know know that uh, this may be may be the end, unless I can talk Devin into. Uh, keeping it going, um, but that there will be other projects. If you like this group of us, uh, and who doesn't, um, we will be on other projects coming soon. So stick around for that, and, and uh, follow us on all of the social medias, and and uh, find out what our next big projects are. Another big announcement is Sarah is reconverting and is no longer <laughs> <eight>. so... <laughs> She's converting to Scientology this time. Yes. Right. She's going to be part of the C... What is it? C-Org. C-Org. C-Pack. Something. Oh, I'm not going to be part of that, for no, sure. Never. No, never. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Oof. Um. Okay, well, um. that's it. Mm-hmm. We, we'll do a little bit of uh, extras for the patrons again this week. Uh, as always, if you're a patron, stick around. You'll get that. Um, otherwise, that's it. Um, thank you so much for going on this journey with us. And uh, to the both of you thank and you. to Deborah, who, who was not here with us tonight, uh, thank you so much for being partners in crime. I love you. We love you, too. I love you, too. Oh, I can't speak for Alex. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
I do. I love you. Heart you both. All right, everybody. Remember the three most important things. Still, uh, wash your hands, get your vaccine, and be kind to each other. And we'll see you at some point somewhere else in the atheist verse. We love you. Goodbye. Over the rainbow. Way up high. <laughs>